Hey, welcome back, guys. We're going to talk about uh, strategies and techniques uh, for competing at a at CrossFit. I think uh, I'm just watching high-level competitors for like the last few years and being able to watch Chad Augustine uh, compete at a high level. Um, what what I mean, the strategies and techniques that he uses to be on point with each workout is, is just phenomenal. So, and there are strategies that go into into CrossFit because now it's a sport. So now there's a game plan that um, athletes like Chad applies to to each and every workout to see what he wants to get out of that workout, what he can put into the workout, um, looking at strengths and weaknesses, and looking at how to how to score as many points for, for that workout as possible. So. Um, I guess we can start with how, how do you strategize or when did you come to a point in your training where instead of just like going through the workout and saying, God, I'm going to go super hard, you're like, hey, this is um, what I can do on this or that. So when did you get to the point of your training? Not only did, like, you know you can train hard, but then now it's like, okay, I know I can train hard. Now you're, you're strategizing and you're putting together a way to um, make yourself that much better. Gosh, I remember... First off, good morning. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think it was like 2011. Um, Blair Morrison, and I was watching him on this like hundreds workout, and he was doing sets of five, and he was in last place. Um, I'm like, huh, that's interesting. And then about three quarters of the way through uh, the event, all of a sudden he was in first place. <laughs> and I'm like, there's something to that. Uh -huh. And so. I just started going around and picking people's brains on who I really thought uh, were approaching workouts like with some strategy instead of just going. Yeah. Um, because and that's like CrossFit is like just go just hard go and see what happens. <laughs> now, <it's> like, <laughs> now the weights are up, the workouts have gotten yep. harder. So. And not everything is going to line up to our strengths. And so I try and spend. Um, probably four or five to one um, strategizing um, and thinking about the workout, visualizing it, visualizing what each rep is going to look like, where I'm going to have my struggles, yeah. um, how I can work around that so that when I actually get to the workout, I've done it a dozen times in my head already and I know where it's going to hurt, I know where I'm going to struggle, um, I've already visualized what my pace is um, and that for me has, has helped me tremendously. Uh, there's times where I know I can't um, I may not be as strong or as fast uh, as a competitor, but if I can out-strategize them and, and uh, be a little bit smarter, mm -hmm. um, then hopefully I can um, I can pull off a little bit of a get some edge at the end. Yeah, that that adds up <clears throat> because you, every minute that the, the muscle up sna uh, dumbbell snatches the row uh -huh. and the burpees, so you walk through the workout and you told the uh, you know Angel Rudy Dave what pace and where, what time you really want to be there. And me and Dave were, were sitting back talking about that workout. And then Dave was like, well, yeah, Chad got to every point where the time that she said that you were going to get to each point in those workouts are reps that you got into those points. Or the time <clears throat> that it got you to each of those rep points, like you were right on point yeah. with those. Yep. Because I had already visualized it. I had already mentally walked through it. Mm -hmm. I knew what my pace would be. Um, I knew where I would take my breaks on my um, on the snatches. I knew what pace I was going to row. Um, I knew my pace on the burpee over the bar. And then I was confident in what I knew I could do on muscle ups with um, staying on the clock as far as managing my breaks. Mm -hmm. And that's so important. If we're if we're coming off a movement or coming off the rings, let's just say for muscle ups, we gotta have somebody either helping us. Uh, manage our breaks or be on the clock and when I say that I mean I'm staring at the clock and I already have predetermined rest because um, especially if you're taking five ten twelve a dozen breaks in yeah. a long workout that adds um, up a yeah lot. five seconds can yeah. turn into 15 seconds um, and all of a sudden you just lost three or four minutes off your time so managing the clock um, and staying on a strategy is so important so what about managing the, obviously the the pain and discomfort of the workout and how, I mean, how did you get to that point where you're like, okay, I know I'm, I'm gonna hurt, but now I gotta make sure that I stay on time and then I go back into that rep without buying in or like just falling falling into that, like, okay, I'm, I'm tired, like, you know what I mean? The overwhelming yeah. like, pain, like, okay, I can stop and feel better or I can rest and just stick to my game plan. I guess there was two things I would say on that. Um, last year, uh, I was out 
trying to recover from any injury and I promised I was like if I could just compete mm -hmm. and have fun mm -hmm. uh, I, like, I'll just enjoy it for the just yeah. to be back in the game yeah so I remind myself that um, a lot when yeah. um, it's uncomfortable like mm -hmm. hey you know what at least you're here and able to have fun um, but the second thing I would say is that I've when I've strategized and I've visualized and I've prepped for it, yeah. I know where it's gonna hurt. So yeah. when you get to that, you've already accepted, okay, yeah. I know on the 12th rep of this, it's really gonna get uncomfortable, yeah. but, but you're prepared for it. Yeah. And we're managing our breaks, so we're always trying to stay just under that red line so that we can keep moving. Mm -hmm. um, and and again, you know, you've already walked through it so many times, you've visualized every single rep that there's no surprises at that yeah. point. So also, I see you use this strategy as a, like burpees now in CrossFit are active recovery. Yeah. Like that's that's pretty huge because now you've totally eliminated as that's like the deal breaker or that's like gonna crush them. It's like, well, I've seen you do enough therapies where it's like it's a warm up or it's part of the workout. So I can like when I when you said active recovery, I was like, now I can see you put your training together and I go, man, that is active recovery because you do use it for the warm up, the cool down or for the meat and bones of your workout or for the uh, finisher so there's no like oh this is perfect just for working out right it's like anytime any place that's just what I can do. Exactly. Mm -hmm. so burpees were just moving, right? Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't matter. We can do them when we're exhausted. We can do them when we're fresh. Mm -hmm. um, and then a workout like that long chipper, uh, I, my strategy was those burpees were going to be an active recovery so I could I could actually get done with the burpees feeling more fresh yeah. to go into the muscle ups. I think like psychologically, like if I said that, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to keep moving and instead of stop. And yeah. like, <laughs> that totally changes um, your mindset on, on burpees. And I was like, whoa, that's like, that's pretty, that's a pretty cool concept because burpees usually kill people and it, it kills them and it affects their, the next movement of what they have to do. Yeah. Um, not only breaks them down like psychologically, but it's like to use it as active recovery and then come back and be like, I'm a fresh, ready to go into the next movement. That's that's awesome. That's where you can really get an edge for somebody else. Um, 60 burpees over the bar is a lot. But if in your mind you're like, okay, this is my pace is an active recovery. I'm catching my breath. I'm really working on my breathing. I'm, I can even plop to the ground yeah. and efficiently come up. Um, then when we get done with those, in that instance, the 60 burpee over the bars, you're walking right to the rings and you're starting muscle ups because you feel better than you did. Um, before you got to the to the burpee over the bar, um, where other people are treating it like an all-out effort, and then yeah. you got to the muscle ups, and then we're struggling. Yeah. So what about um, when do you get to the point? When should you get to the point where you start to to strategize about a workout uh, in, in regular, you know, the regular CrossFit program for a regular gym to like um, the local competitions? So when when should you strategize, or how should or should you start strategizing from the beginning? You got to really know yourself, and you got to know, know, I guess, know how far you want to go in each workout. For sure, and, and it's you got to be honest about your own limitations. Like yeah. I suck uh, going overhead, right? So if there's a snatch movement or um, a, a strength movement that's going overhead, mm -hmm. clean jerk, um, I'm real. I, you got to be honest with yourself on what your limitations are, and, and not think that in the in the heat of the moment we're going to get some, un, you know, unrealistic um, weight, but. Um, that's also uh, you can strategize as far as and start visualizing what that movement's going to look like uh -huh. even if we're a little bit fatigued what I know I can get what I can comfortably get um, and then what may be hey you know what I still got a few seconds left I'm going to go for a heavier weight uh -huh. um, but if I know the workouts a couple days in advance I will visualize for a day and a half yeah. just practicing um, mentally prepping for what it's going to feel like what my body's going to feel like um, is this the first workout of the day? Is it the fourth workout of the day? Yeah. Um, but I really believe the power of visualizing and just mentally prepping for that so that when you walk into it... You've, you've already done it before. Yeah. You've been there. And also, what about the transitions from the uh, movements? The, how, do you, how, do you, how do you handle that or, or manage that in a workout? So transitions are... Um, they should be practiced just like any anything else, any other movement. Um, if it's getting in and out of the rower, I'm practicing getting in and out yeah. of the rower. How long does that take? People me? will use that as like as a break. I'm stuck. I'm <laughs> yeah. like, oh, my feet. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, ah. Oh. 
and and for me, I'm like just above midget status. So uh, my rowing, uh, you know, I'm not going to be able to keep up with somebody who's six for five. Yeah. But I may be able to make up a little bit of time getting quickly in the rower and quickly out of the rower yeah. to the next movement. Um, and where I may have lost 20 seconds on the row in actual rowing, I may have made up 10 seconds of that by just being efficient on my um, transitions. So. Awesome. But also one thing that I've noticed is that you know your times for like a 500 meter row, that, like you know your times for swings, you know your your minute burpees. So what about like knowing your rep schemes and your body, like how important is that? Like knowing yourself where you know like, okay, I can I can do this cleaner trick ladder. I can you know, like pinpoint it to that. Like how long does it take? Or how long, when did you start noticing that? Like, hey, this is how long it takes me to do this. This is how long it takes me to do that. And a lot also, of it. I hear you guys also talk about uh, percentage efforts too because now you guys have broken it down to percentage okay we're gonna go this percentage effort and this is where we're gonna be this is what kind of so you guys are like setting paces now um, from an all-out pace to like okay that, that's pretty yeah. <laughs> that's pretty awesome yeah. right there we're, you guys are breaking down like you know the efforts you want to put into each movement and, and like how many reps you want to get per time yep um, and a lot of it is is just um, taking the time to journal uh, Tracking what we can do is so important because a month from now I may not remember exactly what I did, but if I've written it down and I go, oh, I can do you know 20 kettlebell swings with a 70 in X amount of time, I, I know that. Yeah. Um, and so then mentally that helps me to start formulating my plan. Um, and how does that feel? Okay, well, this is a long chipper workout. I never want to go above 85% until those last you know minute or two. So then you're you know where that that I'll, I'll call it the red line is where we're staying just below that, and we're able to continue to move versus a, a two minute sprint. Um, I'm accelerating through that through that movement um, and trying to get faster or maintain a, a, a pace throughout the whole time. Um, and a lot of that is again is just having a strategy knowing your limits um, knowing uh, how fast you can move and and uh, what the load is and having a strategy on that uh, I'm telling you over and over again well you can beat athletes that are better than you by outthinking them um, when you look and you're like I know exactly when I'm gonna break up this uh, barbell movement um, how many steps it's gonna take me to get to the pull-up bar um, how many seconds it's gonna take me to do X and then I get back to the to the barbell you have um, you've really cut out a lot of chance and, and now you're you're being methodical and it, and it creates confidence also our game plan obviously creates confidence like stick to it because you know where that game plan is gonna go so you're like okay I'm gonna be close I'm gonna finish strong if you're gonna finish strong you're gonna be a higher you know higher percentage point of winning yep what about uh, redlining like the like if you know it's an all out sprint compared to like, okay, this is just the start of the workout and when you know you're gonna just like turn it on and just try to get this workout going. So I know for myself, I'll, we'll use like um, a workout like Fran, 2159 uh, thrusters and pull ups. That for me is an all out sprint. It's yeah. like a, we'll just use round numbers, a two and a half minute workout. Um, so uh, I can go all out on something like that. Yeah. Um, but we'll use a, one of the master's qualifiers workouts, a shoulder to overhead and chest bar pull-ups. Yeah. Shoulder to overhead, they're not a strength for me. So I partition that off knowing that um, I don't want to start sprinting until the middle of my 15 reps. Yeah. So again, but I've already I had thought about it, I visualized it, I knew I needed to take my break so that um, you can maximize your uh, on your weaknesses. So those weaknesses may not quite be as bad as they, they could be. Yeah. So, no, knowing this now, as we're talking, how was it hard to manage to, like, I want to take this to a sprint so that you can score better on that last workout, uh, you know, that Monday workout? Yeah. How do you keep yourself, like, I'm going to go for it, or no, I'm going to stick to my game plan? Like, how hard is it to fight <laughs> the sticking, like, because it's, even for myself, like, weightlifting, I'm like, man, I'm lifting, I want to just challenge my training and improve. But then when I... I'm like, well, I didn't give myself a weight class because I'm just training, just getting, just doing the movements and training. And then when I go, I go, I get there, I'm like, man, I'm not even in the weight class that I want. So then I'm like, I didn't even come here for that. Yeah. So then I started, well, that's not the whole point. The whole point, master the lifts, make good heavy lifts, and that was it. So I stuck to that instead of getting caught up in like, well, I'm not even in the white weight class, so 
So that doesn't have any matter because I came in there to lift the most amount of weight. Exactly. So I stuck to my game plan, but if I would have stuck to like something that, well, I can control, but that was not even the, the, the focus. Right. But it ended in my mind when it's in competition mode and competition <laughs> presents stuff yeah. to you. <laughs> like, okay, now you have to deal with stuff. The power of the mind, right? Yeah. We know that uh, we can... Uh, we can be a mental midget and all of a sudden um, shit the bed and yeah. and then I could have said like oh man I'm not yeah I'm not okay yeah I could have totally just like bought into that exactly then, but but also if we have planned we've strategized we visualize yeah. in the um, as you get to the thick of the competition um, and you're nervous that gives you the confidence because you've already prepared you have yeah. a game plan um, and there is a time and that's once what it, I went back to I'm like yeah. boom. You know, just like the other day, like, hey, slow, methodical, smooth, and then that's what I stuck to, and the lifts were, like, my best lifts in a while, so. They were like, yeah. butter. Yeah. <laughs> so what about managing your, because you want to score higher, to keep from knowing, like, you needed that extra, but also sticking to the game plan, but knowing, like, well, I can't push it, but trusting, like, how is it? And once you, in a you while, can't, you, you got, can't sit and think about that. You, no, you just gotta trust. Like, once oh, in a while, you gotta uh, like that's a like you a gotta go flip. all out and realize, okay, um, I deviated from my strategy and that didn't fare well. Um, and then, how many times does that happen? I do it on occasion <laughs> because you gotta still prove yourself, right? You're like, you gotta push we it. never want to say, oh well, I'm gonna underperform because I'm always strategizing. Yeah. Um, but nine times out of ten, uh, having a strategy will be far better than just going all out. I think a strategy is good for the whole entire career of whatever you're competing at. I think it's it's a it's a game plan for also safety too. For sure. Yeah. The nothing worse than um, staring at a barbell or having your hands on your legs because uh, you deviate from your strategy and now you can't breathe and, and you just hit failure. So yeah. um, that's a horrible feeling. Uh, I'd rather be a couple seconds slower but being methodical on my plan and knowing at the end I'm gonna make up that time. How about coming back um, from knee surgery and your first opens? Like how important was strategizing and having a game plan and how well do you know your body? Like how did that come into play like going into um, your first opens in a couple years? Yeah, yeah. a couple years. Um, and definitely not at 100%. Uh, but again, I just kept reminding myself uh, last year I was laid up and couldn't do anything and so I was just happy literally genuinely coming in with hey I am just happy to be here I'm gonna give it my best yeah. and whatever my best is whether it's first place or last place um, I'm gonna be happy mm -hmm. uh, but I definitely spent more time strategizing um, instead of just go going because of the fact that I was working around a few, um, a few weaknesses yeah yeah I do well when I push it <laughs> and go out. I don't know why. I just feel better, I guess. Yeah. Give 100% on the practice. And when you do that, that is the time to, um, if you're practicing a workout or a lift, yeah. um, and you're like, okay, well, let's just go for it. Yeah. And then you say, huh, okay, I had more in the tank than I thought, or yeah. nope, that didn't work. Yeah. That did not work well. Yeah. Um, and that's part of being able to have a really solid game plan. You know where... Uh, where to push and where to pull back a little bit and be a little more conservative. Um, but the one thing I would say no matter what, whether you have time to practice a workout or not, visualizing and having a game plan and sticking to that um, will help you immensely in the long run. And it's just gonna help you with your confidence. So do you have a game plan like for the month, three month program, or how, do, how does that come to play? Like do you feel like I gotta get these certain movements on for this these three weeks, or how do you put together uh, your program or what you need to work on? So for me, uh, uh, gaining strength in my legs again is still a priority. Mm -hmm. uh, my Olympic list will probably always be my, my number one um, weakness. Which, so uh, my, my programming is built around that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I work on different skills every single day, um, always trying to get better. So at, Monday through Saturday, Monday through Sunday, we pick out one skill. And Yep. Okay. Uh, as today? an example, yesterday was uh, uh, some L sits on the parallettes mm -hmm. and some uh, ring handstand push ups. So, and those will help you with uh, a little of everything, right? Okay. Um, with the muscle ups. Muscle ups with um, body awareness in uh -huh. space, my proprio core reception, um, core stability, uh, and just confidence that no matter what they throw at you, um, 
you can do it. Um, I like being upside down and being a little bit dizzy and still having to do work yeah. um, because it's an uncomfortable feeling. Um, and so just trying so new is things. So that like doing handstand push up and then going into doing? So that's just flipping right upside down um, on the rings. Uh-huh. Um, and now you're doing oh, handstand push ups on the rings. Yeah. Those last year. yeah. <laughs> so, but I haven't just, seen a lot of those. Yeah, <laughs> just trying new things. So you're um, preparing to do some of those? Yeah, the, the, again, that's just deliberate yeah. practice, right? Okay, yeah. So you sprinkle um, different skills yeah. in on a regular basis so that no matter what they throw at you, you um, it's not the first time that you've practiced it. Mm-hmm. So, how's your game plan? What's your game plan strategy? Obviously, you said strength. Um, how did you program for the getting into the opens the last three months? So a lot more conditioning, uh, always still working on my, um, my plan was, um, my peaking was going to be at the, um, at the games in August, um, but I would increase my conditioning um, and longer workouts uh, and prep for the opens and then still working on getting um, stronger with my legs and always working on Olympic uh, lifting. So what are the durations of your workout, like a long workout, short, and then? So anywhere from, um, uh, you know, a couple minute workout all the way up to 20 to 30 minute long, um, long durations, because we know in, in the opens, you know, historically you're gonna have something that, you're gonna have a couple workouts in that eight to 12 minute range, and then something that might be in the 15 to 20 minute range. So um, if mentally you know you've trained through those that capacity um, and through that duration, when that workout comes out, you feel confident. Yeah, because I see you guys write up just stuff on the board, hey, eight to 10 minutes this, it's really like, Methodical. Time. Yeah, it's time. Everything is scheduled um, to how much time you're gonna you're gonna work at either that skill or that that level of intensity for conditioning. So yep. you know if it's low <laughs> a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. And and that way, if you're on a limited time frame, also uh, we're not spending two hours in the gym. You can get a lot of a high volume of training in in a short period of time by just managing um, what you're doing, coming in and training with a purpose. Uh-huh. Awesome. So, any, anyone? Uh, what about for the beginner or novice uh, strategy? What like? What's the biggest strategy for them? Uh, first, have fun. <laughs> yeah, have fun. Uh, yeah. That is most important because if you're having fun, you're going to continue to learn new things. You're going to want to come to the gym. You're going to get stronger. Um, and, and don't rush. So often, uh, I'll, I'll use uh, learning a skill like a uh, kipping or butterfly pull-ups. Don't uh, move past having the requisite strength to do a strict pull-up because, uh, as we say, strength is never a weakness, yeah. right? So yeah. if I can do strict pull-ups um, and I have the strength, then um, finding shortcuts or uh, moving through other skills like a kipping pull-up uh, is going to be great. Um, but we always want to have that foundation of our strength. Um, and then um, it, for a beginner, I would say find a competition. Uh, you, it's amazing how much you learn about yourself, your strengths and your weaknesses, and how motivating it is to, to do a competition. You come back just super fired up. Uh, and whether that's a weightlifting competition, whether it's a, um, a CrossFit competition, just something, um, you will come back and you say, hey, you know what, I found out I'm pretty good at this, but I'm not very good at this, and, and uh, so I want to work on it and get better. Awesome. There you go, guys. Chad Augustine, thank you very much, man. Thanks, Milo. Thank you. Don't forget to have fun. Have fun. All right.